Hey everyone, welcome to the artist review of the MidPad 11 with a comparison to the MidPad Pro 10.8 that I reviewed a few days ago. Both tablets were launched by Huawei in 2021. So my review will be a bit long. If you want to save time, just check out the text review that I have already written on my blog. The link is in the video description below. These two tablets were launched at the same time and have a lot of similarities. If you want to tell them apart at a glance, just look for where the camera is. So on the MatePad Pro, they have a punch hole camera within the display, whereas the camera on the MatePad 11 is on the bezel here. And with a side-by-side -side comparison, you can tell the bezels on the MatePad 11 is slightly thicker, but both tablets, they look fantastic. The design is very clean and simple. I like the rounded corners, the bevel edges, and both tablets, they have the very solid build quality and premium feel to them. One of the main differences between these two tablets is the display. So both are using LCD displays, both have good colors, good brightness, and both have the same resolution, 2560 by 1600. On the MatePad 11, the refresh rate is 120Hz, whereas on the Pro, it's just 60Hz. So when it comes to opening apps, the animation is going to be smoother. When it comes to scrolling web pages, the movement, the animation is going to be smoother. And also when it comes to drawing with the M Pencil, there is going to be less latency. The other main difference is the processor and the RAM. So on the Pro, it has the better processor, the Snapdragon 870, whereas on the MatePad 11, it's Snapdragon 865. There is another model, the 12.6, which uses an OLED display, but also running at 60 Hertz refresh rate. Um, that one is using Kirin 9000E processor. Another difference is with the MatePad 11, there is only 6 gigs of RAM versus the 8 gigs on the Pro. So when it comes to multitasking, when it comes to opening a lot of apps, a lot of web pages, occasionally there may be page reloads or app reloads. But that to me is not really a big issue because the overall performance of the tablet, um, both the 11 and the Pro, it's very smooth um, when it comes to launching apps, saving big files, downloading web pages or downloading anything. It's really fast and very snappy. All right, let me give you the bottom line up front. If you're thinking of getting either one, go with the MatePad 11 because this has 120Hz LCD display and with that 120Hz, you are going to get better performance in terms of less latency when it comes to writing and drawing. And also this has micro SD card slot, whereas this is using the proprietary nano memory. And this is significantly cheaper compared to the Pro. The only downside here is the processor is not as powerful, but it's still powerful for general purpose use. And it has six gigs of RAM versus eight gigs of RAM. In terms of value for money, this to me is like just a better deal. Here in Singapore, the MatePad 11 is priced at 698 Singapore dollars with a launch promotion that includes the M Pencil and this keyboard cover. For the MatePad Pro 10.8, this is $998. So this is 300 Singapore dollars more expensive, which is around 200 US dollars plus. And this has a launch promotion that includes the M Pencil, but with a normal flip cover. So, I mean, in terms of pricing, in terms of the features that you get, this is really the better deal. This is the second generation M Pencil launched together with the tablet. On the MatePad 11, it snaps here at this corner for charging and for pairing. On the Pro, it actually snaps to the middle section here. The second generation M Pencil now has a sensor inside to detect your finger tapping on the stylus for shortcuts. But whether or not you can use the shortcuts will depend on whether the drawing app that you are using has any shortcuts. Alright, let me show you the differences in drawing performance. By the way, my camera is capturing this white canvas as off-white as a bit yellowish. I'm not sure why, but both white canvases are white in real life. So let's start with the MatePad Pro first. 
The punch hole camera on the Pro will sometimes get in the way of the user interface, but it's not a big issue. Touch sensitivity still works around the camera. Both tablets have laminated displays, so there is no gap between the glass and the LCD beneath. So when drawing, it really looks like the line is appearing from directly beneath the tip, but here on the Pro, you can see some latency. I'm drawing really slowly, but there is still some latency as the line is trying to catch up with the pen tip. Now how much latency there is will depend a lot on the apps you use as well. And now I'm going to draw some diagonal lines slowly to test for diagonal jitter. So I can see some wobble. I'm trying to keep my hand perfectly stable, but you can see there is some wobble. The line is slightly wavy. If you draw fast, the lines will be straighter. But if you draw slow, then there is some wobble. And this only affects diagonal lines, not vertical or horizontal lines. And here are the diagonal lines on the mid pad 11. So you can see the lines are straighter. There is no wobble, no jitter. The lines are not wavy. So the M pencil is actually more accurate on the Mate Pad 11 than on the Mate Pad Pro. There is still some latency though, as the there is still some latency though, as the line tries to catch up with the pen tip. Initial activation force of the M pencil is quite low, so this allows me to draw thin and thick lines easily. The line transition from thin to thick is also quite smooth. Lines can taper quite well. And I can use this for hatching if I want to. It's also quite easy to maintain consistent pressure to draw lines with consistent waves. So the M pencil is quite accurate on the mid pad 11. By the way, this plastic nib that I have here is the transparent one. And the tip is titanium coated. The other nib provided is the gray one, which is just a plastic nib. This has slightly more friction, but both nibs are still considered very smooth on the glass display. Dots can be drawn easily by tapping the M pencil. There is tapping sound, but it's not too loud. Even though the refresh rate of the Mate Pad 11 is 120 Hz with certain apps, the latency will still be quite noticeable, such as the case with Minibank Paint Pro that I'm using here. This is Concepts. Latency here is better but there is still slight latency, but definitely much better compared to Midibank Paint Pro. Here's a real-time side-by-side comparison of the latency of both tablets with the Mate Pad 11 on the right side. The latency actually looks kind of similar to me, except on the display with 120Hz refresh rate, the animation of the line as it appears on the display, it looks smoother. Whereas the animation of the line that appears on the Mate Pad Pro, it's not as smooth. The lines appear to come out like bit by bit, but it's not a major issue. All right, let me quickly draw something to talk more about the drawing experience on the Mate Pad 11. And this app that I'm using is concepts which can be found in the Huawei app gallery. This app is available on iPad, Android, on Windows, and this is one of my favorite drawing apps. Now this version of concepts that's in the 
Huawei App Gallery. Uh, it hasn't been updated for a while. The last update was actually more than a year ago. So that's the situation with um, drawing apps uh, in the Huawei App Gallery. You may not get uh, frequent updates because um, Huawei App Gallery is still considered quite new relatively speaking compared to the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store and by the way the Mi Pad 11 is using Harmony OS version 2 there is no Google Play Store on this OS so if you have to um, use Google Apps if you rely on Google Apps like Gmail Hangouts, uh, Calendar, Maps, or even YouTube, um, you won't find those apps in the Huawei App Gallery, which is their App Store. So that could be a problem if you have heavy reliance uh, on Google Apps. As for drawing apps, well, the variety of drawing apps is not as well large compared to what you can find on the Google Play Store but um, it's not a big deal because you can actually install many of the drawing apps by downloading their APKs which you can easily find from APK libraries so uh, when it comes to drawing apps yes there are fewer drawing apps but um, the few good ones are still available such as sketchbook autodesk sketchbook there is Clip Studio Paint, which is subscription base. By the way, you can see some uh, dots. Uh, those are actually the glitches for the app, which hasn't been updated for a while. Let me reduce the brush size. Uh, one nice thing about Concepts is this app uh, is a vector drawing app, so you can actually zoom in real close and the lines will still be sharp and this app supports pressure and tilt sensitivity i really love drawing with this app and pressure works quite well although it's not as well compared to drawing with clip studio and Medibank paint pro uh, pressure sensitivity on those two apps are just like much better but I still love drawing with this because of the vector effects, because of the clean lines that I can get. The drawing performance overall is quite smooth. It's um, very snappy. There is no lag whatsoever. Oops, what happened there? Yep, so there is no lag. When it comes to zooming in and out, I don't see any uh, lag as well. Although if you use um, textured brushes, like really huge textured brushes, sometimes you can see some lag, which I will show you later on. But um, at least with concepts, I don't see any lag. So what I'm drawing here is um, some random building that I found online. Oops. Why did that line appear like that? The pen tip is definitely quite smooth on the on the glass. I'm not sure if I would recommend uh, installing a matte screen protector because that um, would give you a more tactile drawing experience, but it's also going to affect the image quality of the display. And this LCD display has good colors out of the box the colors are vibrant uh, if you want to use this as your main media device um, you can definitely do so uh, you will definitely enjoy the high resolution when it comes to playing videos but as mentioned there is no YouTube so um, if you want YouTube you have to use youtube.com you have to go to the uh, website which I uh, when it comes to playing YouTube videos, you can get up to uh, 1440p resolution. So the videos, all the visuals, they will look sharp. And all the visuals that you see here uh, on this tablet, it's really sharp. There is no pixelation whatsoever.
So all the user interface elements, um, the buttons, the menus, they are all going to be really sharp. So the M pencil um, is actually quite accurate. So if you want to use this to draw like precisely, um, if you want to use this to draw architecture, um, you can certainly do so. I mean, when drawing architectural buildings, um, you want that accuracy. With other drawing tablets, sometimes when the stylus is not that sensitive, um, it's difficult to draw thin lines. And also with the wobble, uh, with the diagonal lines, um, it's difficult to draw with precision. So here, at least with the M pencil, it's not too bad. Okay, so what do we have here? Um, this building is just like 10% done. This is a very complex uh, building that I'm drawing here. So I still have a long way to go. Um, but I mean, when it comes to drawing with this, I don't have any issues as in, um, if I want the lines to be thinner, I would just draw with less pressure. And if I want the lines to be thicker, I just draw with, well, heavier pressure. So pressure sensitivity is not really an issue. The issue here is uh, this app has some glitches. Uh, yeah, so that's the issue here. If you use Medibank Paint Pro, it should be fine. The nice thing about concepts is because this is a vector app, all these lines are actually individual parts. So I can actually select the lines here that I've drawn wrongly and delete those lines instead of just using the eraser to erase those lines. So this actually is much faster when it comes to erasing lines more accurately. But of course, um, each drawing app will have its own pros and cons, obviously. So the con here is the lines here can be a bit wavy, but that also comes down to how slippery or how smooth uh, this pen is sometimes on the glass surface. So this pen actually glides very easily. If you want more control, you may want to um, by an artist glove um, so that you can rest your hand on the display but I don't think um, that's an issue here at least with um, the type of drawings that I do which is mostly the sketchy uh, style so um, even if the lines are not perfectly straight it's okay but if you want the lines to be perfectly straight um, you just have to use the right app for the right job. So you can see a lot of all these speckle marks, all these are actually the glitches. Thankfully, when I export the art uh, into JPEG, uh, those glitches, uh, those splatter marks, they don't appear. Okay. As for the amount of RAM uh, that this tablet has, uh, which is only 6 gigs. Um, for drawing purposes, 6 gigs is more than enough. I'm not sure how many layers you can create with um, the various drawing apps, but uh, the number of layers is not a problem unless you use like hundreds of layers, then yep, um, there could be an issue. But I mean, for general purpose drawing, or even if you want to create like professional work, I don't think the amount of RAM is going to limit what you can draw. You just have to find the right app. Actually, the variety of app is the limit. So you may not find the app that you like from the Huawei app gallery. But at least for me, um, I have Midibank Paint Pro and I have Concept, so I'm more than happy. But uh, when it comes to using Google Apps, I do use like a lot of Google apps. Um, yeah, so not having those apps, uh, it's an issue. Oh, um, because 
the OS is how many OS there are, there are some integrations with um, services that you are not going to get here so for example when I'm using my Samsung tablet I can connect my uh, Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive to the uh, file system the file browser but here I am not able to uh, do that I cannot integrate or connect my Google Drive um, to the file system which means sometimes when I save files um, I cannot save directly to Google Drive from Harmony OS I have to well save it to the web version of Google Drive so that's uh, a minor inconvenience um, or maybe it's a major inconvenience if you like create a lot of work then um, it's a major inconvenience because you have to deal with a lot of files yep so pressure works really well I can draw thin lines like this very easily this is how thick that line really is palm rejection at least with concepts is perfect it's flawless when I try to draw with my finger nothing will happen it will only pan the canvas and it still supports finger gestures really well so palm rejection um, actually depends on the app you use so with certain apps they actually um, don't give you the option to have strict palm rejection or they don't give you the option to draw with only the pen so you can actually draw with your finger and for those apps you would have to rely on the palm rejection provided by the M pencil and generally speaking palm rejection works pretty well but um, you have to expect some stray strokes when you are using other apps that do not have perfect palm rejection this building is not easy to draw um, because there is so much details and also I can see the app it's starting to glitch more and more I'm starting to see a lot of splatter marks unwanted splatter marks so maybe it's time for me to just um, stop drawing and use maybe another app so this is the drawing that I have so far um, let's zoom in yeah so once I zoom in I can see all the splatter marks let me turn off the layer and turn it on again and the splatter marks are gone the splatter marks um, actually doesn't look too bad except they are not intentional I actually have no idea what's the color of this building so I'm just going to color it um, whatever way I think the colors uh, should look after I'm done with this drawing, I'm presented with another issue. So when I tried to save this concepts file online so that I can work on the file with my computer or other tablets, I wasn't able to open the file um, probably because this version of concepts is just too old and the file that it saves cannot be opened by a newer version of concepts anyway if you are working with apps that save your file directly to the cloud then you shouldn't have this problem this is MidiBank Paint Pro so this app has more latency compared to the other app um, compared to concepts but here I'm actually able to get the pressure sensitivity to work a bit better as in um, the thickness of the line uh, they don't vary too much so this basically means that um, it's easier to maintain consistent pressure with this app to draw lines with consistent uh, width whereas with concepts I find that sometimes the lines they do waver a bit more than what I prefer so the control here with MidiBank Paint Pro is much better yep I get um, I mean the performance is more predictable more consistent here I don't get uh, surprises 
But with concepts, sometimes I get some surprises. Um, sometimes it's a good surprise, um, but sometimes uh, the lines they don't come out the way I expect them to. Uh, my lines here again not as straight, um, but not an issue. Okay, um, yeah, so this looks fine. Yeah, I have no problem drawing with Medibank Paint Pro. The main issue here with Medibank Paint Pro is, well, there is latency. Yeah. But anyway, if you are not drawing like that fast, um, if you are not doing like really quick sketches, then it's not a big deal. This is me drawing at normal speed, and the latency is fine. Fine in the sense that it doesn't affect my work. These are the drawing apps that I have on the tablet. Midibank Paint Pro, Tayasui Sketches, Huion Sketch, Concepts are all available from the Huawei App Gallery. Krita, Autodesk Sketchbook, they are installed using downloaded APKs. And this app looks very much like Autodesk Sketchbook. But it's actually a Chinese clone, so uh, be careful when you are installing apps from the Huawei App Gallery because sometimes the names or the icons can be the same as the drawing apps that you want, but they are actually uh, a totally different app. I highly recommend you get the MatePad 11 over the MatePad Pro. Even though the processor and the RAM here is not as good, but the overall drawing performance is better in the sense that the M pencil is just more accurate on this um, tablet and also there is I mean the animation of the lines appearing is smoother I cannot say the latency is less because I don't see that myself but the animation of the lines as they appear while you're drawing um, that animation is definitely smoother here with the Mate Pad 11 the battery life is fantastic. You can get at least um, 8 to 12 hours of battery life, depending of course on what you do. But battery life, it's not an issue here. It has terrific battery life. If you guys have any questions regarding the MatePad 11, let me know in the comment section below. And do check out my reviews for other tablets as well uh, from the artist perspective. I have links for you in the video description below. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye.